So let's take a look at uh, today. So we had the um, the conference call was last night on how to trade momentum, uh, how to look for stronger markets and weaker markets, meaning look for when momentum is possibly coming in the market. Uh, and it doesn't really matter if you, like I said, use um, any type of futures, currency, uh, crypto, stocks, ETFs, indexes, whatever you use, it's the same methodology. What we're trying to do is we're trying to, if you're strictly trading momentum, that's the momentum of the market, we're looking for shallow retracements, these shallow retracements, shallow retracements that stay above my shallow zone. So if you look at the zones, we did a conference call on this. I marked them up last night for about 45 minutes. If you want to review that conference call last night on 5-4, you can see that I have our main zone is a 38-54 zone. So this is our main zone. This is our buy zone for what's called full zone retracements. That's where you get a pullback into this zone area and a continuation up if it's green. So if we have green, all green zones, we're looking to buy. If we have all red zones, consequently, we're looking to sell. So if you're red, yesterday we had a lot of red zones. Yesterday morning, we had a lot of sell setups. So yesterday was just the opposite. We had the sell signals that were firing off yesterday. Um, we had FZR trades into the full zone retracements. Um, so these are FZR, full zone retracements, in between my main zone of 54, 38. Those are FZR. And then from there, we have momentum trades, which are these arrows that fire on the indicator. Your audible alert will come on your computer when there's possible momentum coming in the market. Um, when you see these momentum trades where you're straddling or below the lower zones, this is a 30, 32 zone and a 38. So if you are below or straddling these zones and you get the oscillator below the bear, which is 65, it's a sell signal. Um, over here below 65, touch right on 65, this is a sell signal of momentum. So we had some momentum sells yesterday in a row. We had one, two, three, four. We had five. This is the best momentum sell you're going to get in the market. I went over this in the conference call last night. This is called an extreme momentum sell because the oscillator is actually below 20. And you can see when the oscillator gets below 20, you get these extreme sell-offs. There's, what, four of them yesterday. And I went over this last night in detail. So we don't need to recap it that much. But you can see that these are major sell signals in the market where the market is creating momentum because we are below the shallow retracement. So if you're, you're going to look for major possible sell-offs, you want to stay below the shallow retracement here. All right, you want to stay below for major sell-offs or at least straddle it. And then you can see that you get some momentum sell-offs when the oscillator agrees. If you get outside of the 54 retracement out here, you're going to possibly get a trend change. It's where it becomes quite dangerous for momentum. In fact, you get above 38, uh, momentum dissipates, and you're looking for a V top or V bottom, depending if it's green or red, and then you're looking for that. So if you go into today's action, we are in an upside. We have no momentum here. Look at the oscillator. It's oscillating between 20 and 80, 20 and 80, right? This is how normal traders use the oscillator. They use an oscillator by buying and selling overbought or oversold markets. They'll sell this high, then they'll buy this low, then they'll sell this high, then they'll buy this low. That's what normal traders, if you look at all the books that are written about oscillators, whether it be an RSI, a stochastic, a MAC, or what have you, I mean, a lot of them are just sell the overbought or sold. The problem with doing that methodology that I found over the years and years um, is that, you know, a market can stay oversold for a long, long time. And a market can stay overbought for a long, long, long time. So what you end up doing is you end up counter-trend trading the market. 
and if you uh, get into that, a lot of the indicators and oscillators out there are geared towards counter trend trading. And counter trend trading, it just doesn't work. And I've never met a trader that's been successful uh, over the years, and uh, including myself and all the traders that I've ran into. Um, in fact, I was at the I was a guest speaker at the Las Vegas trade show um, back around what was it, 2017 or so, or I believe it's 16, 17, and um, there's over 6,000 traders there uh, around the world. And when I was a guest speaker up there, I even asked them um, a couple things about, you know, about counter trend trading in general. And not, I don't, I don't even recall many hands even raising their hands that they made money on counter trend trading. So it just goes to show you that counter trend trading just doesn't work on a consistent basis. So the methodology has to be, according to this algorithm, is we buy high, sell higher. We short low, buy lower. And that sounds different than what anybody goes over all the time in books and and in rooms and stuff like that. But it's it's that how that's how the market works because what you're gonna do is they, they're gonna tend to try to mark the market up or try to mark the market down. So our job as traders then is we need momentum to survive if we're gonna trade the market. Um, getting into chop is not very conducive to winning trading plans. So we have to put ourselves in a position to win. So how can we do that? These zones allow you to not only find where the market can possibly V bottom or V top called the FZR, full zone retracements, but they also can let you know where there's momentum. So very simply, um, I have a 54 here, a 38, and then a 30 and a 32. So if you look at the momentum in the market, the market's really strong today. So if you noticed, I've, we've stayed above since yesterday, since midnight, we've been above 38 on my zone. It's been above there all night. So there's no reason to short the market at all, none. We're looking to buy retracements, buy high, sell higher. We don't short low and buy lower. That was yesterday. This is where you don't take any longs yesterday morning. This is where you only short retracements. You short FCRs and you short momentum. So if you can get that right, right there alone, my zones get your mind right right away. So that there alone will get your mind right and get you in the right direction of what we need to be doing. So then we can check it down and say, hey, okay, well, either I can take these zone retracements, these zones, or I can look strictly for momentum and look for the oscillator to show me strength or weakness with my zone levels. And then you got yourself a nice little combination of parameters when they meet. You can see that the market tends to move in the direction we want to move. So if I look at this last setup right now, uh, this is an extreme momentum trade because here's my bull. My bull is, my standard bull is above 40. Now you can adjust this. I show traders how to do it on the algorithm in our conference calls on the automation side of it. I show you how to adjust that to above 90 for buys, below 10 for sells are typically the best because that's extreme sell-offs or extreme um, um, where they like to mark, it, mark the market up. But if you look, there's my bear. My bear line standard 65. My bull is 45. So if I go over here and anything above 45, you're looking at 40, you're looking for a continuation. Anything below 65, you're looking for a sell-off. Well, this oscillator, when this arrow fired, when the audible alert went off on your computers, whoever has the system, um, it told you that is a momentum buy. This is the best buy you're going to get as far as extreme momentum when you have what's called an extreme MOMO. So that is a very bullish, bullish buy signal. Right now we have another one. Look how it came down, um, a bullish buy signal based upon it is above 40. So, you know, you can do that. I mean, I know we got news coming out. It just came out at 8.30. But you can do these bull and, and bear signals um, according to the oscillator and then also your um, also your, uh, your your bull and bear. So when news comes out, now news just posted at 8.30 here this morning. So we'll look for the gap. So we'll, we'll take a look at these gaps this morning. We have a big gap 
So if we break 4102 and a quarter, now this is where order blocks come in and supply demand. So I got an order block here, 4102, where a previous big supporter, big resistance that happened, actually big resistance right there at 4102. So if we had a big uh, possible sell uh, back here yesterday, and that comes all the way back down when the market was tanking, if you look back here, that's where the order block started right here. The order block started when this we had, market had a huge sell-off yesterday morning on our sales. So there's our order block that happened, and it projected it going forward for us. So we know that they like to take it from order block to order block. So we know if we break 4102 and a quarter this morning, and we get a break of 4102 and a quarter, and we retest 4102 and a quarter, my next stop on the SP is 4120. So you can see if the market is strong or weak. Now it's still holding my zones. Now that was an FCR full zone retracement here, right? Because it went into my zone and got a reversal. So that is a buy signal in a full zone. But until I break 4102 and a quarter, I'm not looking for any movement on the S&P to the upside. You can see it cannot close above it. You need to close above it, retest it. Order blocks, they like to get away from them, retest them, and we should fill the next which will be the supply line of 4120. So that's going to be the method of me looking for a long. Um, if we get 41 a quarter, got rejected again. You can see it got rejected here right at my that order block or supply line. I want to start closing above it, close, 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 retest it, give me momentum to the upside, give me an arrow that fires there in between my 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 demand supply or order block, and I'm looking for 4120. All right, so 4120 is going to be the target. If it breaks 4120, look at that gap in the market. I got another big gap, 4120 to 4146. So I now got another big order block or supply line that happened at 4146. So these are tradable gaps that we'll look to trade today. We'll look to trade this gap, and we'll look to trade this gap. And if you look on our previous videos and the charts I sent out, well, these these order blocks or supply demands are, are 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 pretty good at predicting where the holes in the market are. We had a we had one 4104 um, to what 4146 almost 44 points to the upside potential on our last move and we had a big one on the downside yesterday so we're gonna look for that today we're gonna look for a 41 that that's resistance 4102 now what are order blocks order blocks are where you have a big move in the market where the market's accelerated where if you got big institutions or big banks or hedge funds, or what have you, they can't fill all their orders in one block. So they, they buy and sell in blocks. So what they'll do is you can see where the order block originates because you get vertical movements. So anywhere these lines originate, you're going to see vertical movements. right? These lines originate. Here's another order block. See the vertical movement there. See the vertical movement there. So you got three order blocks there, one, two, three. You can see where they all got generated. They, why, that's why these lines are drawn in because there was an order block sell. So that lets me know, and these are a higher time frame order blocks. These are not um, the, these are not the Uni Rinko bar, but you can see that's where it originated. That's where it originated. That's where it originated. So I know then that this is where it originated. That if I break 4102 and a quarter, I've got nothing but upside of 4120 because that's the next area where it went vertical. So the market went vertical here. So that's where the market went vertical, and that's why these lines work out so well. So that's where the market went vertical, and there's an order block right there. The next one is up here. If I go back, that's where the market went vertical back here hard. See how it went vertical hard here, and that's why that line got drawn in right back there also. And that's how order blocks are created. So that lets me know then there's a hole in the market up here. So I know there's a hole in the market, right? There's a hole in the market at 4102 and a quarter. So now I got a tradable gap I can trade all day till four o'clock today. So if I skinny this down, I know that I, that there I got a tradable gap right there between order blocks or supply demand. 4102 and a quarter to 4120. That's going to be relevant all day today. In fact that'll be relevant until next week until these are broken and retested. Once they're broken and retested you'll get new levels. The key is to find big big so you got several order blocks below you buy blocks but we don't have very many sell blocks above us so that tells us there's tradable gaps meaning there's very low volume nodes in between here on market profile so there's a path of least resistance 
Now the big breakout in the market then is another big gap of 63 to 89. So you can tell by just by skinning this down where you should be uh, looking to trade the gaps in the market. Above 4190 is a huge breakout in the market. That's when you see these markets just really accelerate to the upside. So you can trade these gaps in between there until we get a, a final breakout. And the big support on the S&P is 4076 next week. We have a break 4076. Look to short low and buy lower. This market should break down just because you're trading order flow here. These are order flow order blocks. And I updated this on the new software. The new software has all these order blocks in. It's specifically designed for the Renko bar. It does look at, at higher time frames than what you're trading. Um, and that's why they're so accurate on projecting where there's holes in the market. So what we'll do then is we'll look at 41.02 and a quarter. We'll look to break here this morning. We'll look to rotate, rotate back down. Old support becomes new resistance. Old resistance becomes new support. Rotate back down. Get a pull in. I want to see some momentum arrows fire. I want this oscillator to be strong below. And let's see if we can drive ourselves to 20. Then we get to 20. Let's get through it. You know, let's get through it for another possible buy entry. Let's rotate back down to it. And let's get an arrow, some arrows to fire. And let's try to get uh, 41.46. All right. If it doesn't want to break out today, and let's say 41.02 and a quarter is going to be a ceiling. If that's going to be a ceiling, that's fine. We already know where the support is. Look where the support is. It stopped it right on my order block down here almost to the tick. I think it broke it by one tick here. So 40.93 and a half is the order block. These are very, very accurate. So what we'll do is, is if it rotates below 40.93, we'll rotate back up to 40.93. We'll see if we get weakness below 65 on my oscillator. We'll turn red zone. Our red our zones will turn red like this to short, like yesterday. We'll look for sell zones like this. We'll look for the market to roll over, turn red, print us the arrow below the shallow retracement, and get the oscillator below. All right, so we, we got our game plan for today. We, we know the game plan on the S&P. So what we're going to do is we're going to feed off of, I want to break out of 4102 and a quarter. That's what I prefer right now. Why? Because the market's been in an uptrend since midnight. We've had no sell signals at all. So the market's intact. So I want to break this through here. I want to retest it. I want to get some buy signals through here, right? Right here. I want to get some buy signals like right here. And this is how you can trade your smaller, smaller Rico bars. So this is the 12020, our main chart. Why do I have a 11313? Because look at the strength in the market that came in. It came in from an FZR into a momentum trade. This is where the oscillator comes in. All right. So here you have your oscillator came down to 40. See how 40 is nice support? So you can, when you're breaking through these order blocks of supply and demand, this small time frame or this small Renko bar works quite well because what you'll do is you'll look for that oscillator to stop above 40 for buys when that arrow fires and you hear an audible alert on your computer. That is a tradable arrow, right? So your fill is 41.02 even. It got as high as 41.06. That's four S&P points or 16 ticks potential just on that last trade at 837. Why? Because the oscillator, we want it to be a buy. Why? Because it's above my shallow retracement. Remember, I said 38 is a great match. There's two matches you want to do. You want to be above the shallow retracement here. There's your shallow retracement. And you want the oscillator to be above 40 for buys. So the, the, the neat thing about that, how it lined up, it was breaking through my order block at the same time. So you, that's when you want to trade this smaller, this smaller uh, Renko bar. Now you can do for FZRs like this, but I really don't like trading FZRs off the smaller one. I only like trading off the 12020 FZRs because it can, it can pull you in and just take out that low real quick. But I love trading these higher lows or this smaller Renko bar with the oscillator and the shallow retracement when you're breaking through these order blocks. So when you've got an order block like this or supply or supply line and you are breaking through it on a retracement, right, and you get that retracement to that zone, which we did, it happened right there at, uh, what, 837. So 837, you can tell 837 right here is where you're breaking through it. 
So 837, you're breaking through that order block right there on the larger Rinko, and you get that nice pullback on the smaller one, and it held it held my shallow retracement, and it, it was above 40. So you use this smaller Rinko bar in, in with these order blocks too. These order blocks can be real nice. So if you want to even buy this bottom, now you can do it. If you want to buy the bottom of 54 at 831 and have a small stop, then you want a these red, red um, on this smaller Rinko, you'll have these red reversal bars. This is where rolling position traders are caught. So this is a nice little buy signal on an FCR trade if you want to fill in a smaller smaller Rico. But notice the momentum coming in the market right now. Notice the momentum coming in the market. And I, I talked about this last night in the conference call. When this matches up, when shallow zones match up with the oscillator, good things happen in the market. Look at how it stopped right on my 40. And just like yesterday, the, the, the largest trade of yesterday um, happened also the same, same exact way only it was below 65. So you just let it match up, let it do its thing. If you look here on one of the largest trades we had yesterday, it matched up. Right here, it was right straddling my lower, also, I mean my shallow retracements, and then we got a blow off sell off below 20. We had a huge sell on the S&P, that was uh, 92.50 potential, and it went all the way down to uh, what, 68. So nice over 20 some odd point S&P point move over 80 ticks of potential just by reading momentum. So that's how you can read momentum and use these order blocks to your favor. You, can, you don't have to wait for the break. If you use this, you don't have to wait for the break retest of the supply. If you want to time it with your, that's why I have this small chart over here. This smaller Rinko size, this is a 120.20, right? This is a 120.20 Rinko, and this is a 113.13 Rinko. Well, that is momentum because I'm holding my shallow retracement, and consequently I'm holding my oscillator. And that's how you can trade these gaps in the market. Now, the target on this is what? The target on this is all the way up to 20. So if you got long at this level, and you're long at 02, and we're sitting at 07, you're up five S&P points on a runner, you're up 20 ticks, then you can manage your runner and say, hey, I'm going to target 41.20 on my runner, and I can go break even plus one I want right here, and I want to try to get to 20. I want to get to 20 today and be long at 02. I want to try to make 18 S&P points with no risk right now because of my runner. Now you have a free trade on your hands, and you're trying to run. So that's when this Rinko size is used. It's great when you break through order blocks. If and only if these match up, they have to match up. You and I, I, I talked blue in my face yesterday on this yesterday over 45 minutes. Shallow retracement has to hold. Oscillator has to hold. If you do that and those match up, you have momentum. If they don't match up, you do not have momentum. Where the market loses momentum is when you get out of these shallow retracements. So watch when you break through these order blocks or supply demands for this chart to fire in the trade, right? Because you got a lot of good momentum for it and you're good to go.